In this video, we're going to go over the CUDA software infinite pre-calculus free worksheet continuity. Now our instructions are to determine if each function is continuous at a given x value. So quickly, the easiest way to think about a continuous function is to think of a graph that you can draw without picking up your pencil. If that is the case, then the function is indeed continuous. Now if the function is not continuous, we're going to be classifying each discontinuity. And there will be three different types of discontinuity in this worksheet. One of the first we'll go over is jump. Now jump discontinuity, say you have your x, y graph, and your function goes from one curve or line, stops, then picks up at a completely different point and continues. That is a jump discontinuity. You can see that there's essentially a jump. It ends here, but then picks up at a completely different y value. The other discontinuity that will occur in this worksheet is infinite discontinuity. Now, infinite discontinuity is essentially a vertical asymptote that will be the limit, which we will go over in a later lesson. But for now, you can think of this as if you had a graph, say something like this, and your y value continually increases, and then there is a break, but before that break, y is essentially approaching infinity. And then lastly, there will be removable discontinuity. And you can think of removable discontinuity as a whole. So you'll have your graph, and then all of a sudden, you'll have a hole, and then it will continue on from there. So removable discontinuity occurs when you do not have a value of y, for an x value, so as we approach that point from the left, and as we approach that point from the right, it seems as though we will come to that same value, except there is no y value at that x point. That is removable discontinuity. So let's start by looking at number one. For number one, we have our function f of x equal to x divided by the quantity x squared plus 3x which is graphed below. Now we're looking at x equals negative three and x equals zero. So when x equals negative three, we come to this vertical asymptote. And when x equals zero, you can see it's essentially a hole. So at x equals negative three, there is an infinite discontinuity because our y values will continually approach positive infinity or negative infinity in this case. So we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative three. And at x equals zero, you can see there's a hole, so that's going to be a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. Because removable discontinuity, the graph seems as though it's going to approach that number from both sides However, there is no y value for that x value. That is removable discontinuity. So again, that's infinite discontinuity at x equals negative three and removable discontinuity at x equals zero. Let's continue on to number two. For number two, we're given the function f of x where f of x is equal to negative two while x is less than or equal to three and f of x is equal to x minus five while x is greater than three. So we're looking at this function at x equals three, which occurs here. However, at x equals three, we're at the value negative two, and then when we start with our next function, so going from f of x equals negative two to f of x equals x minus three, if we were to plug in that value of three, three minus five is also negative two. So we can draw this graph without picking up our pencil, therefore it is continuous, and it is continuous at x equals three. So for number two, our answer is continuous at x equals three. Let's continue on to number three. For number three, we're given that f of x equals x plus one divided by x squared plus two x plus two, and we're looking at this function at x equals negative three. So what I've done is I've graphed this 
on my online graphing calculator. So here's our function x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 2 and we're looking at this graph where x equals negative 3. So zooming in we can see that negative 3 occurs here and at negative 3 we do indeed have a value. At negative 3 we're at negative 0 0.4 and we can draw this graph without picking up our pencil. Therefore, our answer in number 3 is that it is continuous at x equals negative 3. Let's continue on to number 4. Number 4, we have x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 4 as our function f of x. We're looking at two different values. We're looking at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So graphing our function x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 4 on our graphing calculator, remember we're looking at x equals negative 2, and when we're at the point x equals negative 2, y is undefined. So you can see that that will be a removable discontinuity because the graph is continuous up until that point and then also past that point. However, there is a hole within our graph at negative 2. So that's a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 2. And you can also see that if we were to plug negative 2 in for x, negative 2 squared is 4 and 4 minus 4 is 0. And we cannot divide a number by 0. Therefore, when we plug negative 2 in for x, we get undefined as our answer for f of x. Now let's look at x equals 2. When we're at the point x equals 2, you can see that that line x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. So as we're approaching x equals 2 from the left, y is getting closer to the value negative infinity, and if we're going to 2 coming from the right, y is getting closer to positive infinity. Therefore, it's an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. So removable at x equals negative 2 and an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. Let's continue on to number 5. Number 5, we're looking at f of x when that function is equal to x squared over the quantity x plus 1. Now right away, if I was to plug negative 1 in for x, I would get negative 1 plus 1, which equals 0. And remember, we cannot divide a number by 0. That will give us an undefined answer. So at f of negative 1, we are undefined. So we know that this function is not continuous at x equals negative 1, but we have to figure out what kind of discontinuity it is. So when we graph x squared over x plus 1, the function, you can see, if I was to zoom in, you can see here is negative 1, x equals negative 1, and as we approach that from the left, y is decreasing to negative infinity, and if we were to approach negative 1 from the right, y is continuing towards infinity. So you can see that negative 1 is a vertical asymptote, therefore it is an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 1. And then lastly for this section, we're going to look at 6. f of x equals negative 2 times x and that's for values where x is less than 3, and then f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 16 for x greater than or equal to 3. And we're looking at this function at x equals 3. So we know that our value 3 is continued in the second half of this function and not continued in the first half. So let's go ahead and graph each of those. First we're going to graph negative 2x, but remember it's for values where x is less than positive 3. And our next function is for values where x is greater than or equal to 3. And that's negative x squared plus 8x minus 16. So the first half of our function is represented by the orange line, and the second half is represented by the purple parabola. And we're looking when x is equal to 3. 
when x is equal to 3, we're at negative 1 for our parabola, so the second half of that function. And remember, the first half, negative 2x, as we approach 3 in the x, y is getting closer to negative 6. So you can see that it is a jump for our x values equal to 3. So this function is not continuous. If we were to draw this, taking into account the constraints, we would have negative 2x represented by the orange line up until 3, and then represented by the purple parabola, we pick up at y equals negative 1 and continue that function. So that's just a rough depiction of what the graph looks like, and you can see that as we approach that value of 3 from the right, we get close to negative 6. But then, as we start off with that value, we're at negative 1 for our y values. Therefore, this is a jump. So we have a jump discontinuity at x equals 3. Let's continue on to our next section. Our instructions for number 7 through 12 say to determine if each function is continuous. If the function is not continuous, we're going to find the x-axis location of and classify each discontinuity. And for these, I will continue to use a graphing calculator so that will help us see visually. Now, our first function, f of x equals the opposite or negative x over 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. And there is no value that we can put in for x that will not give us a y value, and we can essentially draw this graph without picking up our pencil. Therefore, for number 7, we have a continuous function. Let's look at number 8. For number 8, we have x divided by x squared plus 6x plus 9. So as we approach negative 3 from the left, we're getting closer to negative infinity in the y, and as we approach x equals negative 3 from the right, we're getting closer to negative infinity in the y. Therefore, we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3. Another way to know that this function was not going to be continuous is if we were to plug negative 3 in for x in our denominator, we would get negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 9, which is equal to 9 plus negative 18 plus 9, which equals 0. And our numerator cannot be divided by 0 because that will give us an undefined answer. That means f of negative 3 is undefined, and we will have a discontinuity at that point. Let's continue on to number 9. In number 9, we can see right away that we're not going to have a continuous function because we can plug negative 3 in for x and get 0 in the denominator. And we cannot divide a quantity by 0 because that will give us an undefined answer. So our discontinuity is going to occur at x equals negative 3. But we need to figure out what kind of discontinuity that is. So let's go ahead and graph. So here I've graphed our function, f of x, and you can see that as we go to negative 3, approaching from both the right and the left, we will go closer to negative 2. However, at that point, and you can see that this is a hole at negative 3. Therefore, it is a removable discontinuity. So at number 9, we have a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 3. Let's continue on to number 10. For number 10, we're going to see what values of x, x squared minus 4x equals 0. So x squared minus 4x equals 0. Well, to start, we can factor this and pull out an x from each term. So we can rewrite our denominator as x times x minus 4, and we're going to see if there's values of x that will make our denominator equal to 0. And that occurs when x equals 0, and it also occurs when x equals a positive 4. So we're going to have two points at which this function is not continuous. We're going to have 
it be not continuous at x equals 0 and not continuous at x equals 4. Two points of discontinuity. But now let's graph and see what kinds of discontinuity we have at each of those points. So our function is x divided by x squared minus 4x. Our first point of discontinuity occurs at x equals 0. And you can see that at x equals 0, our value we already determined was undefined. However, as we approach 0 from both the left and the right, the function appears to be continuous. However, we know indeed that it is a whole because it's undefined, therefore it's removable discontinuity at x equals 0. And now looking at x equals 4, as we approach 4 in the x direction, y gets closer to negative infinity, and as we approach it from the right, y gets closer to positive infinity. Therefore, at 4, we have an infinite discontinuity. Let's continue on to number 11. In number 11, we're looking at the function f of x, where x plus 4 is that function for values less than or equal to negative 2. And for values where x is greater than negative 2, our function is negative 2x minus 11. So if I was to plug negative 2 in for the first part of our function, f of negative 2 would equal negative 2 plus 4, which would give us a positive 2. Now if I was to take this value of negative 2, I know that it is not a part of the second half of this function. However, if this function is continuous, the value that I get when I plug negative 2 in will be the same as that first part. If not, we will have a jump discontinuity because it will be approaching one value and then we know that the next value for f of negative 2 is 2. So plugging negative 2 in, we'll have negative 2 times negative 2 minus 11. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. And when we take away 11 from that, we'll get negative 7. So going from 2 to negative 7 will be a jump. Therefore, we have a jump discontinuity at x equals negative 2. And let's double check this and see it visually by graphing. So we're going to put x plus 4. And remember, x plus 4 is the function up to and including negative 2. So for x values less than or equal to negative 2. And then for x values greater than negative 2, we have the function negative 2x minus 11. And you can see if we were to zoom out, f of negative 2 equals 2. And then when we go to the next function, we're picking up at negative 7. But this would be an open circle around negative 2, negative 7, because it is not a part of that second half of the function. So you can see that we do indeed have a jump. And then finally, for this section, let's look at number 12. Number 12 says f of x equals x plus 7 over x squared plus 3x. Now remember, we can tell if a function has discontinuities if the denominator ever equals 0 for an x value. So let's set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. x squared plus 3x equals 0 when I can pull out an x from each of the terms, so that's x times x plus 3 equals 0. So for our x values, we have x equals 0 as one point of discontinuity and x equals negative 3. If I was to plug 0 in for x or negative 3 in for x, I would get 0 as the value of my denominator and I cannot divide by 0. Therefore, at 0 and negative 3 in the x, we are undefined in the y. But let's see what kind of discontinuities those are. And let's solve that by graphing. So I'm going to plug in x plus 7 as the numerator and then x squared plus 3x as the denominator of my function. And you can see that at negative 3 and 0, 
both of those points are infinite discontinuities because x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote, and so is x equals 0, which means that y values approach infinity, or the y values approach negative infinity at those points. So infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3 and x equals 0. That's our solution and number 12. Let's continue on to the next section of this worksheet. For numbers 13 through 20, we're going to find the intervals on which each function is continuous. So let's start with number 13. In number 13, we have a function in which f of x equals x for all values when x does not equal 4. However, when x equals 4, f of x equals 2. So you can see if we were to plug values in for x, f of 2 equals 2, f of 3 equals 3, and then f of 4, remember, we need to use the second function because at x equals 4, f of x is equal to 2. So we go from 2 to 3, back to 2, however, continuing on for f of 5, then we're at 5. So essentially the graph would look like this. x is negative 1, f of x is negative 1, and so on. If x is 0, f of 0 is equal to 0, we get to f of 3, which is 3. But then at f of 4, we drop down to 2, but then continue on afterwards for our function f of x equals x. So you can see that we have a discontinuity at x equals 4. So the intervals on which our function is continuous goes from negative infinity to 4, and at 4 we have that point of discontinuity, and then we pick back up after 4 until infinity. Those are the intervals at which our graph is continuous. And we're looking at those intervals in terms of x. So this function is continuous all the way up until x equals 4, and then afterwards that function remains continuous. Let's continue on to number 14. We have that f of x equals negative 2 for values where x is less than 3, but then when x is greater than or equal to 3, we're looking at the function negative 2x plus 6. So in order to see if this is continuous, at x equals 3, that second half would equal negative 2 if that's the case. So negative 2 times 3 plus 6 equals negative 6 plus 6, which equals 0. And 0 is not equal to negative 2, therefore it is indeed a point of discontinuity. But up until that point, our function is continuous. So we're on the interval negative infinity up until 3, and then, including that 3, our function is continuous from 3 to infinity. So we will use parentheses to close the interval of the first part of our function, and then a bracket because x equals 3 is a part of that interval in the second half of our function. Let's continue on to number 15. And number 15, in order to find the points of discontinuity, we're going to see when this denominator is equal to 0. So x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0 when, well, let's factor. What two numbers multiply to give us positive 3 and add to give us negative 4? That's going to be negative 1 and negative 3. That factored form of x squared minus 4x plus 3 is x minus 1 times x minus 3. If we were to FOIL that back out, we would indeed get x squared minus 4x plus 3. And that is equal to 0 when x minus 1 equals 0 and when x minus 3 equals 0, which occurs at x equals 1 because 1 minus 1 is 0, and it occurs when x equals 3 because 3 minus 3 is 0. And remember, 0 times any quantity is 0. So our points of discontinuity occur at 1 and 3. But until those points, our function is continuous. 
So we're going to start a negative infinity for our interval and go up to 1, pick back up after that point of discontinuity. That's at x equals 1, our point of discontinuity. Starting at 1, we're going to go to 3, our next point of discontinuity. And then we're going to pick back up after that point of discontinuity and continue on until infinity. So that is the intervals on which our function is continuous. Because here we have a point of discontinuity and here we have a point of discontinuity. Let's continue on to number 16. In number 16, in order to find a point of discontinuity, that's going to occur when our function is undefined or when that denominator equals zero, which will never occur. Therefore, our function is continuous in number 16. So because it has no points of discontinuity, the interval that the function is continuous on is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Continuing on to number 17, again, we have the same situation. For any value of x that we plug in, we will always get a value for f of x. It will never be undefined. Therefore, because this function is always continuous, our intervals on which it is continuous is from negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no points of discontinuity. In number 18, there are multiple cases in which our denominator equals zero. If we were to factor that, we're going to see what two numbers multiply to give us positive two and add to give us negative three. And that's going to be negative one and negative two because negative one times negative two is positive two and negative one plus negative two is negative three. So rewriting x squared minus 3x plus 2 in factored form will have x minus 1 and x minus 2, which again is equivalent to x squared minus 3x plus 2. And that's equal to 0 when x is equal to a positive 1, since 1 minus 1 equals 0, and 0 times any quantity is 0, and when x minus 2 equals 0, which occurs at x equals positive 2 since 2 minus 2 equals 0, and 0 times any quantity is 0. So we have two points of discontinuity, 1 and 2. So our interval will go from negative infinity to that lowest discontinuity point, which is 1, and then from 1 to our next discontinuity point, 2, and then from 2 to positive infinity. That is the interval on which this function is continuous. It's continuous up until that first point of discontinuity, which occurs at x equals 1, and then from there it's continuous until the next point of discontinuity, which is x equals 2, and then it's continuous from then on out. And number 19, again we're going to be factoring this denominator to get x times x minus 1. That is the factored form of our denominator, and that denominator equals 0 when x equals 0 and when x equals a positive 1. So those are our two points of discontinuity. So our function is continuous from negative infinity to that first point of discontinuity, 0, from 0 to the next point of discontinuity, 1, and then from 1 to positive infinity. Next, we'll look at our last problem in this section, number 20 f of x equals x over x squared minus 6x plus 9. So factoring that denominator, what two numbers multiply to give us positive 9 and add to give us negative 6. That's going to be negative 3 and negative 3. So the factored form of our denominator will be x minus 3 times x minus 3, which we can write as x minus 3 squared. And that is equal to 0 and we're setting it equal to zero because we cannot divide by zero. So when that quadratic equals zero, our function f of x will be undefined. And that occurs when x equals positive three. So our function is continuous from negative infinity to that point of discontinuity three, and then from three to infinity. Those are the intervals on which our function is continuous.
Now we'll move on to our critical thinking questions. For number 21, it says to write a function that has an infinite discontinuity at x equals 100. So our function is in terms of x, so f of x equals, we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals 100. So our denominator is going to be equal to zero when x is 100. So x of 100 minus 100 will equal zero. And our numerator can be fairly simple. Let's make it one. So one over x minus 100 will give us a function that has an infinite discontinuity at x equals 100. If we were to look at that denominator, again, plugging 100 in for x, we would get zero as our denominator and we cannot divide one by zero. That will be undefined. And to double check that it is indeed an infinite discontinuity, let's look at our graphing calculator. So we're going to plug in one over x minus 100, and then we're going to have to move till we're at 100 in the x. And you can see that as we approach that x value of 100, we're from the left, y is getting closer to negative infinity, and if we approach that value from the right, y is getting closer to positive infinity. Therefore, it is indeed an infinite discontinuity. And if you do not have a graphing calculator on hand, you can double check that it is an infinite discontinuity by entering in different values of x going up to 100. So 98, 99, 99.5, 99.9, and so on, and see what that approach is. And then you can enter in numbers starting at above 100, so say 102, and then try 101, 100.5, 100.1, and so on, that they will approach either negative infinity or positive infinity. And lastly, number 22. We are to write a function that is continuous over negative infinity to zero, so we have a point of discontinuity at x equals zero, zero to one, our function is continuous, so we're going to have another discontinuity at x equals one, and then from one to infinity. So it's discontinuous at x equals zero and x equals one. So we have two points of discontinuity, x equals zero and x equals one. That means that at each of those x values, our denominator is equal to zero, because if we were to divide by zero, our function would be undefined, giving us that point of discontinuity. And lucky enough for us, we've already found this interval, if you remember, from number 19. From negative infinity to zero, zero to one, and then one to positive infinity. So we can simply just rewrite our function of 19. However, in order to switch it up a bit, let's go ahead and make this positive as opposed to negative. So we'll have f of x equals x minus one over x squared minus x. The important thing is that our function has a denominator of x squared minus x. When that's factored, our denominator will be x times x minus one, and that equals zero when x is equal to zero and when x is equal to positive one, which again are our points of discontinuity. And that wraps up our CUDA software infinite pre-calculus free worksheet continuity. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, please visit my website, maymap.com, M-A-E-M-A-P.com, for more information on continuity. However, before moving on, remember to like, subscribe, and share.